What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, I'm Big Rob and I make videos every single day. Most of them being Pokemon Go related. So if you want to join the fam today, smash that subscribe button. Today I have for you guys some more Pokemon Go news. I'm going to be breaking down the APK that the Silk Road has data mined and uncovered a lot of upcoming things that are going to be available in the update. This should be coming out Thursday or Friday. As we know, quests are going to be a new thing in the game, uh, giving us the ability to possibly catch Mew. So with that being said, let's jump right into the video. All right guys, so I opened up the Silk Road. Their article on the data mine that they published today, probably earlier this morning. I will put that up here in the corner so you guys can see it. It should be up there already. New in version 97.2, get ready to research with Professor Willow. Now uh, you see the new loading screen, um, I'll zoom in a little bit here so you guys can see that. Um, it shows Professor Willow, Mew in the background, a bunch of Pokemon. Um, yeah, so that's a pretty dope addition that's going to be on the new update. Um, here we go. Buckle in travelers, it's time to take Pokemon research up a notch. Version 0.97.2 has begun propagation on Android and iOS will soon follow in preparation for the March 30th launch of the new research feature formally identified as quests. The Silk Road team has studied the new APK to see what exciting discoveries and mechanics await our travelers in their new collaboration with Professor Willow. Without further ado, let's dig in. Research Quest Basics 101. Niantic shared the basics of the new research mechanics in version 0.97.2. Here's the gist, travelers, the two types of research, which we went over in one of my previous videos. Um, you can contribute to two types of research, field research and special research. Special research objectives come from Willow himself and yield important discoveries. Research tasks. Gather research tasks by spinning Pokestops. These are self-directed. Tasks give you objectives like catching certain Pokemon, battling, etc. and have different difficulty levels. That'll be interesting. That'll be something super interesting and it will give us something to do pretty much every day. Some goals to meet every single day. And I think it would be cool if they implemented maybe EX raids, EX raid passes as a reward for doing some of these quests, which is um, what a lot of us have mentioned in the past would be really cool for the people who still have not received one um, since their, their system does seem still a little bit broken. Anyways, let's get back on track. Earning rewards. Completing research will earn you rewards which depend on the difficulty. You may complete as many tasks as you want every day to earn rewards all day. So that means you can get as many tasks a day as you want. If you want to grind all day and get a bunch of rewards, seems like you can do that, which will be super lit for the people who grind all day already. Stamps. Each day you merit one stamp by completing a field research task. Now, I've seen some people mention that stamps don't um, go away, meaning if you don't play for one day, your stamps will still be there. Unlike our daily spin and catch streaks, if you miss a day, you have to start all over again. Um, some people are saying that they're going to remain there, so if you don't play for one day, you can come back and um, start off where you left off, meaning... Um, Let's say you had something important to do one day and you were like almost to your seventh stamp. Uh, you could come back the next day and actually receive that if you do the tasks. Which is awesome because I was a little bit worried about that. Sometimes I get busy with real life and I'm sure other people do as well. And they won't be able to maybe play for one day and then they'll be like, oh, all that hard work just went down the drain. Well, uh, if it's true that they don't um, go away if you don't play for one day, uh, that is lovely because a lot of people <laughs> would probably be mad if they went away after not playing for one day. Research breakthroughs. Obtaining seven stamps achieves a research breakthrough for greater rewards, hence point to legendary Pokemon. And as awesome as these mechanics sound, that's everything we've known thus far. Fortunately, information from the APK can shed new light on the details of these exciting mechanics. No, many of the, de of the details leaked on our 0.91.1 APK teared on on February 5th, 2018, but they're back with plenty of extra additions. First, let's take a look at new discoveries apart from those involving the new research mechanics coming on March 30th. Professor Willow. He's back, he's 3D, and he's going to FaceTime you? I'm just gonna like <laughs> summarize this portion up for you guys, because me reading the whole thing to you guys would probably be super boring. Uh, I think this video is probably already like five minutes long. Um, basically, they're saying that in the APK mine, they find that they could like uh, FaceTime you, and it'll pop up with an image circle, and um, 
his face is going to pop up with an image circle as if he was like FaceTiming you or video chatting you. And then he has different um, like expressions and things that he's going to do. Like chin scratching, folding arms, giggling, uh, looking at his Poke Watch, maybe like telling you, hey, hurry up, you know, hurry up with this research, I need to find Mew. It also has like expression on set, happy, sympathetic, energetic, pushy, impatient, admiration. So, um, yeah, it looks like he's going to be a thing, a permanent thing in the game where he's going to actually communicate with you a little bit, which seems kind of cool. Adds another element to the game. Uh, it's gotten kind of boring for some people uh, that are just doing raids and stuff because it's the same thing over and over again, especially now that they're releasing the same legendaries over again, even though they could be shiny and have new moves. All right, two new badges were added to the game. Uh, you can see right here the golden binoculars. One is for challenge uh, and quest, challenge slash quest badge, and the other is for a Mew encounter badge. Quest badge has appeared in the graphic asset, and we believe it will be activated immediately on launch this Friday. Curiously, we did not spot the Mew encounter badge in this APK, though admittedly, we're still a bit worried after an intense community day in the Sylph League. We'll have to see what Niantic has planned for the Mew badge. New Pokemon attribute, legendary versus mythic. Previously, a Pokemon attribute existed called Is Legendary or Mythic, which designated if a Pokemon was Legendary or Mythic. In this ABK, a new attribute has appeared for each Is Legendary or Is Mythic. So now they have distinguished between a Pokemon being Legendary and a Pokemon being Mythic, which means that's great for us because now they can release Mythic Pokemon uh, and they won't be in raids, it looks like, which is good because in the main series games, I don't think you ever fought a mythic Pokemon. New encounter types for Research Award, Encounters, and Mew. As legendary Pokemon may soon be encountered as a Research Breakthrough Award, it follows that the encounter type may have different dynamics than a standard wild Pokemon encounter. So in other words, if you do all your research and you get to that seventh day and you get all the breakthroughs and stuff and you actually get to encounter a Pokemon, it looks like it'll be different from a regular encounter of a Pokemon in the wild, which was something that I was thinking about because I was wondering like, Want to be super hard to catch um, a wild or mythical Pokemon with just like your Pokeballs? Or what if you don't have any Pokeballs or something and it pops up? You're pretty like, won't you be like screwed if you encounter a Pokemon and you don't have enough supplies or golden raspberries or something? I'm wondering how this is going to work, how they're implementing it into the game. That's something that I was kind of worried about because I'm like, what are they going to do? Are they going to like uh, let you encounter it and. Uh, use your own Pokeballs or Great Balls or Ultra Balls or are they going to give you like a certain amount of Premier Balls like a raid or what are they going to do? You know what I mean? So um, maybe comment down below and tell me what you guys think um, they might do with these encounters because it's definitely saying here that they are different than they were before. Apparently that bug, which I didn't know it was a bug to begin with, I thought it was just something that they implemented into the actual game um, where you went to catch a Pokemon and let's say you use an Ultra Ball well, after you caught it, you went to encounter the next Pokemon, and your Pokeballs will still be stuck on Ultra Balls. Apparently, they fixed that, and that is no longer a thing. I thought that that was uh, something that they purposely put in the game, but apparently not. Some people liked it. Some people were annoyed with it. I mean, I didn't really care for it, so it doesn't really matter to me either way. Okay, now we're getting down to the nitty-gritty. Research task options. These are all the things that it'll have you do for research right here. I don't know why I was pointing to my face. That's weird. These are all the things pretty much that they will have you do for research stamp, I'm guessing. Multi-part, which like kind of indicates to me making a party. Um, catch a Pokemon, spin Pokestop, hatch an egg, complete a gym battle, complete raid battle, complete quest, transfer Pokemon, favorite Pokemon, uh, auto-complete. I don't know what auto-complete means. I don't have any guesses on what that might be. Use a berry in, so maybe use berry in gym. Upgrade Pokemon, so maybe powering up a Pokemon or or evolving a Pokemon. Oh no, evolve Pokemon's down below it. So upgrade is probably meaning like uh, powered up with candies and Stardust. Land throw, I don't know what that means. Get buddy candy, so walking a buddy and getting a candy. Badge rank, so I'm guessing that means like rank up your badge or if you have a badge at a certain rank. Come on air airplanes, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to film a video here, fam. And then player level, so I'm guessing they want you to be a certain level um, to receive or to complete this quest, which might be unfair to some people. Uh, hopefully they base it on your actual player level in the game or something, because that would really suck for some people. And then they discovered some beginner quests that are designed to help more casual players familiarize themselves with lesser used mechanics of Pokemon Go. 
Uh, however, in, in a separate list, the following factors also appear to be on the table. Pokemon type, Pokemon category, weather boost, daily capture bonus, daily spin bonus, win raid status, raid level, throw type, win gym battle status, super effective charge move item, unique Pokestop, quest context, badge type, and player level. Which I think pretty much seems like the same as the list above, kind of. So that kind of is confusing. These mechanics appear to be more advanced actions and attributes, some of which many casual players will have to study up a bit to conquer. As of prior leaks, the following two delineations appear. We're getting down to the end now, guys. Quest awards. The following seven rewards all appear to be available to earn as research rewards. Experience, item, stardust, candy, avatar clothing, quest, and Pokemon encounter. Now, the thing that I find interesting on this list is avatar clothing. So, in other words, uh, are they going to come out with new clothing to give us, or are they just going to award us some clothing, random piece of clothing from the shop? Now, that is something to think about. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up the APK. Uh, I want to know what you guys think, so comment down below. Tell me what you guys think um, about this APK. What are you guys most excited for? Um, are you excited to be able to encounter Mew in Legendary Pokemon without doing raids? I feel like this is a good thing for rural players because they can actually encounter mythical or legendary Pokemon without having to find people to do raids. I feel like this is something that really benefits rural players or players who don't have a raid group to go out with. They can actually um, encounter legendary and mythical Pokemon without needing anyone but themselves, which is really awesome. I'm happy about that. And in two days... Yeah, in two days, we are getting quests, and I will be uploading vlogs of me going on my daily quests to this channel. And if you guys don't want to miss that, definitely smack that subscribe button and that like button and become part of the family today. That's going to wrap up the video for today, guys. Um, I'm still sick. My voice... <clears throat> Oh geez, my voice really hurts. I'm filming this video outside and it's really warm. Got the Pokemon hat on, represent for the Pokemon squad. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, smack a like, subscribe, check the top link in my description for the giveaway link. Uh, like I promised my subscribers back when I had 250 subscribers that I was going to do a giveaway once I hit that. It's a $50 gift card of the winner's choice. Hit that link, enter the giveaway, and you'll be set. So I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.